Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So the topic of today is matrices and a matrix is really just a 2D array of objects. The main difference between any 2D array and a matrix is the operations that we perform with the matrix. And probably the most famous operation, the poster boy of the matrices, is, uh, is the matrix product or matrix multiplication. So today I wanted to talk about a particularly interesting trick that I learned at university. What I want to talk about today is graphs. This is mathematical graphs, mind you, not just graphs as in charts, but the mathematical graphs. So this is a collection of nodes and uh, the edges connecting them together, or vertices and edges connected together. So a graph might represent something like uh, cities and the roads in between them, or anything like that, really just a connected bunch of nodes. So graphs can be either directed or undirected, and what we've got here is called an undirected graph. Because if you can go from node A to node E, then in our graph, you can also go from node E back to node A. So that's undirected. If you can go from one node to another, then you can go back as well. Um, the trick that we're going to go through will work just as well for directed graphs too. Um, the other thing that I want to mention about the graph above is that you can't stay on a node. So you can't go from A back to A you have to go to a node in between. But that's not obligatory either, that's up to the graph that you're using. So this trick will work just as well with directed graphs and it will also work if you've got nodes that lead back to themselves. Okay, so we've got ourselves a graph, connected nodes, and we might ask some interesting sorts of questions. We might ask questions such as, if you were at node A, could you get to node E in five moves? So granted that you can't stay in the same place for any move, could you start at node A and end at node E in five moves? Or we might ask other interesting questions. We might ask something like, how many ways are there to get from node A to node E in say 10 moves? I mean, they're seemingly easy questions in a way, but how would you solve that? You know, how would you solve that? So the first ways to solve this type of question that might come to mind are something like the A star algorithm, your path finding algorithms or Dijkstra's algorithm, breadth first search, that sort of thing. And you might have a heap in there or something to check if a path is likely to lead to an exit. You might have a hash table of paths that you've already checked, that sort of thing. And you're sitting there counting all of these different paths. Things will get complicated. That's not an easy algorithm to program, really, if you think about it. It's not that easy. So. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about another way of representing the graph above. This is called an adjacency matrix. Now, it's just a perfectly normal 2D matrix, and it represents the same information from the graph before. If you list all of your nodes along the column headings and all of your nodes along the row headings, and at any point in your matrix, a particular element represents the path between the two nodes. So right here, we've got A to B, and since that's a one, that means that there is a path from A to B. In one step, you can go from A to B. So the adjacency matrix lists out all of the adjacent vertices. Now you can see here that you can't go from say A to G because there's a zero there. So that means that you can't go from A to G, but you can go from A to B. Adjacency matrix is perfectly simple, but what I think is interesting is what happens, what happens if we square the adjacency matrix? Well, we get another box of seemingly random numbers, seemingly, except there's something very interesting about these numbers. If we look at this number just here, for instance, the BA little element just there, it says two. And do you know what? Two happens to be the number of ways that you can go from A to B in two moves. And if we look at this other number over here, for instance, from D to E, it's a one. And coincidentally, there happens to be one way that you can go from node D and end up on node E in two moves. In fact, if you read any of these numbers out, say this one just here, this two, or this one just here, what you'll get is the path count that it takes to go from one node to another in two moves. That's pretty interesting. But what's really interesting is what happens if instead of we square the adjacency matrix, what happens if we raise it to the power n? Okay, well, we can have a bit of a go. Let's square the square. So if we square the square, then what we're actually doing is raising our original matrix to the fourth power. And what happens is very, very interesting. Do you see this 18 right here? B to D. 
there happens to be 18 different paths that you could go in order to go from node B to node D in four moves. Is that amazing or what? So fascinating stuff really, if you raise an adjacency matrix to the power n, you end up with another matrix where every element represents how many paths there are from each node to each other in n steps. Absolutely astonishing. Whereas in this little example here, we're using say seven nodes, we could easily do exactly the same thing with 1000 nodes or 10,000 nodes. So we could quite easily square uh, an adjacency matrix of sides say 10,000 by 10,000 and quite easily figure out if you could get from node say X to node Y in 50,000 moves. I mean, that is a difficult thing to compute unless you know this trick. Yeah, so it's an absolutely brilliant trick, really. I loved learning it. I remember when my uh, lecturer mentioned it in class one day when I was at uni, he just said it so nonchalantly. He said, and by the by, if you square this, then uh, it tells you the path counts. And I thought, it tells you the what now? How? <laughs> There's some more things that I wanted to say about this uh, type of, uh, of reasoning and thinking. There's a lot more that matrix multiplication can do for us when you think along these lines. And I'd like to make more videos, but uh, we'll see how we go. We'll see how popular this one is. Uh, I'd also like to make a video on how and why 3D graphics uses matrix multiplication so much too, because that's a fascinating topic too. I mean, matrices are so, so incredibly useful. Uh, it's so funny to think that back when they were invented, uh, the inventor thought that they were just a, a pointless novelty. They're an interesting mathematical novelty with no real uses. <laughs> I think he would be very surprised if he saw today's society where we've got matrix multiplication happening billions of times a second in just about every device on earth. Anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say and uh, links down below for all of the software that I've used to make this video and uh, uh, links down there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook and all of that sort of stuff. So if you want to have a look, just check that out. And if you want to say hello, just leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, cheers for watching. Have a good one.